Okay, so today is the first lesson in our new unit. This unit is called analytical trig. Analytical coming from the root word to analyze. And um, we're going to be having tons of formulas. So um, if you are in class, you've got a yellow formula chart. If you're a connected learner, these are on the table um, at the entrance of the school. You can stop by any time the school is open and grab one of these yellow papers. If you're a connected learner and you have a friend who's a face-to-face -face learner, you can ask him to grab one for you. Um, if you cannot come up, I put these on Canvas as PDFs. This is a two-sided document. So one PDF is one side and one is the other side. Okay? And then if you, if you can't print and you can't come get a copy, you absolutely want to save those PDFs somewhere where you can easily access them because you want to have this right in front of you. All right, so we're going to be starting with trig identities. And so the first thing is to understand what an identity is. It's an equation where the left side equals the right side for all values of the variable for which both sides are defined. So we do know that sometimes things are not defined, like when you're dividing by zero. But the identity is true all the time that things are defined. Okay? So, for example, um, well, never mind. We'll get into examples. Today, we're going to focus on the reciprocal and the quotient identities. And I didn't write identities, right? Identities. Left out a few letters there. And when it says C chart, I'm talking about the yellow formula chart. Okay, so we're not going to write down all these identities in our journal. They are all there on our chart. Okay, so let's do some examples together. Alright, so example one, if the cosecant of theta is equal to 7 over 4, find the sine of theta. So the hardest part is going to know where to get started, but for today I'm telling you that we're focusing on the reciprocal identities. So on your chart, these are your reciprocal identities. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals, so we're, these go vertically like this, in little pairs. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Okay? So if the cosine of theta is 7, four, seven fourths, and we look on our identity, the cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. So we would write that down. So this is our fact that we are going to use. Actually, is that wrong? That's one fact. The other fact says sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant of theta. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. The definition of reciprocals means that if we were to multiply cosecant and sine together, they would equal 1. Okay. Since we're looking for sine, the easiest thing to do is to use this equation here, this identity. And so then we would say that sine of theta would be equal to 1 divided by 7 fourths. Right? So we're just doing a simple substitution. The cos secant of theta is 7 fourths, so we are just going to take the 7 fourths and substitute it into that identity statement. Alright, so then we have to remember what division actually means to do. 
So this is 1 divided by 7 fourths. By definition, that means to do 1 times 4 sevenths. And so the sine of theta comes out to be 4 sevenths. All right, second example, if the cotangent of x is equal to 2 divided by 5 root 5 and the sine of x is equal to the square root of 5 over 3, find the cosine of x. So the hardest part is thinking, what, what are we going to use? So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, but they're not asking me to find tangent. So what I'm really going to use here is the, it's called the quotient identity. And so this is actually on the other side, the side with your unit circle. And the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And the cotangent of theta is equal to cosine theta divided by sine theta. These are called your quotient identities. And that's what we're going to end up using here. So the cotangent of x is equal to the cosine of x divided by the sine of x all the time. That's an identity. And so then we're going to substitute. We know that the cotangent of x is 2 divided by 5 times the square root of 5. The cosine of x we don't know. And the sine of x is the square root of 5 divided by 3. So for those of you who it helps you to color code, you might want to grab a highlighter or a colored pencil. So I've taken this fact, cotangent of x, and I've substituted that value right there. And then we've taken this other fact about sine x, and we've made a substitution there. Alright, so now we just need to do a little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of algebra. If I want cosine x to be by itself, I have to get rid of the thing that's dividing. The way we get rid of division is to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5 over 3 on the right hand side, and I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5 over 3 on the left hand side. If it helps some of you to see this as a fraction times a fraction, you can put that over 1, but you don't need to. This numerator and this denominator are going to divide out and equal 1. Anytime you have something divided by its own self, it equals 1. So the right-hand side is just going to be cosine of x. When I go to multiply these two fractions, the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is going to make 1. And so then I'm going to have 2 over the square root of 15. Alright, as we proceed through this example and the next one, if you have a question, type it in the chat. Otherwise, I'll assume we're all... Understanding just fine. We're going to do one more together.
All right. So, before I start leading us through this, take a look at the information you have. Take a look at the identities that you know. Right? So, we've got reciprocal identities here. We've got some quotient identities here. It's about how you might get started. So as you approach these, there's different ways, like you might see your entry point at a different spot than somebody else, but you might all come, end up coming up with the same thing. So remember that secant is the reciprocal for cosine, right? And cosecant is the reciprocal for sine. And cotangent, cotangent has a connection to both sine and cosine, right? So one way to approach the problem could be like this. If cosecant of theta, cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta, or its partner says sine theta, is 1 over cosecant theta, right? These two guys are reciprocals of each other. So when I see cosecant of theta, I automatically know that sine theta is the reciprocal of that, 3 sevenths. Now, I think most of you cross that bridge with me, but I don't want to leave anybody on the other side. Ms. Collier, how did you do that? I did sine theta is 1 divided by 7 thirds. And so then that's going to become 1 times 3 sevenths, right? This is the reciprocal. You're going to start to just see that in your head and not have to write all this up. All right, so now I know what sine theta is. Well, I know that the cotangent of theta That division, that quotient identity says that the cotangent of theta is cosine theta divided by sine theta, right? So for cotangent of theta, I'm going to substitute 2 square roots 10 over 3. For cosine theta, I don't know what that is. And then for sine theta, I'm going to put in 3 sevenths. Alright, again, if it helps you to track what you're substituting, here's my cotangent of theta, cotangent of theta, substitute that in there. Here's my sine theta, sine theta, 3 sevenths, substitute that in there. Okay, now I'm going to solve for cosine theta, so I'm going to multiply this side by 3 sevenths. 3 sevenths over 1, if you like. And I'm going to multiply this side by 3 sevenths. 3 sevenths divided by 3 sevenths is 1. Remember, canceling is not a math verb. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's 2 square root 10 over 7. Woohoo! Yay! We found cosine. Oh, but it didn't say find cosine. It said find secant. Oh, no worries. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. So if 2 square roots of 10 over 7 is my cosine, then my secant is just going to be 7 over 2 square roots of 10. But darn it, we're still not done. The square root of 10 is an irrational number. Fractions are not considered simplified if there's an irrational number in the denominator. So we have to rationalize the denominator. 
So recall that technique. We multiply by the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. So this quantity right here is just the number 1 in disguise, right? So if you multiply something by 1, you are not changing its value, but you are going to change how it looks. And why in the world would we want, wish to do that? Because now, and don't cross these guys out, you'll just get back to where you started. Multiply straight across, 7 square roots of 10. Now, how much is a square root of 10 multiplied by a square root of 10? It's 10, right? And 2 times 10 is 20. So now that's your simplified answer. All right, anybody have a question? Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you four problems to try for classwork. I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on your own. And then I'm going to be sending to, your, to you to your breakout rooms to have a discussion about them. Guys, it's important that you talk math, but some of you have shared with me, Ms. Collier, I, I don't like to go to the breakout room straight away. Like, um, I need some of my own think time. And then if we just go to our breakout room and none of us have figured it out yet, we don't talk to each other. So, I'm going to give you time just to think and work. So these are your four questions. Write those down. Take a picture of them, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to give you four minutes to start working. 